The hour is 7 o'clock having arrived. I'll call the council to order. Let the roll reflect that all council members are present and a quorum has been established. Council, we have before us the, uh, the minutes of the regular meeting of September 8th. Additions or corrections to the minutes of that meeting. Seeing none, they stand approved. Uh, council items to be considered. Any council items to be considered this evening? Okay, seeing none, we'll have, uh, first off, we'll start with a presentation with the Hastings Library. I see Mary's here to give us an update. Welcome to the council meeting. We're glad to very, very glad to have you here. And give us the latest what's happening at uh, Pleasant. Good evening, Mayor Hicks, council members, and city staff. I don't know if you can even see me above here. Uh, first, I wanted to share a little bit with you about uh, the summer programs that we had. Uh, we wrapped up a very busy summer. We had more than 64,000 visitors at Pleasant Hill Library in the months of June, July, and August, so we were, um, we were hopping. We had really strong participation in Hastings from children and youth. We had almost 900 um, children and teens combined register for the summer reading program. And we were particularly in, uh, excited to see that our teen participation was up 23%. So we were very pleased with, um, with what happened this summer with summer reading. I have for you copies of our September and October program guide. This includes youth, family, and adult programming at the Pleasant Hill Library branch specifically. As you know, all of our programs are free. Some of them do require registration and those are indicated in the program guide. Our hours expand during the school year, so I wanted to make special note of that. We are open on Sundays from 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, from now until uh, right before Memorial Day weekend. So um, we have people that regularly come in and it's a great time for students that need homework time. This month we resumed our regular story time schedule that includes story times for babies, that's most Monday mornings. We have story time for all ages, most Wednesday mornings, and we have evening story time, which is monthly on the second Tuesday. We have other programs that you'll see in there for youth that focus on arts and crafts, music, and technology. For families that are looking for activities during the October school break, we have several events that are planned. On Thursday, October 15th in the morning, uh, children ages 3 to 12 can try their hand at coding and then use their skills to navigate robot bees and cars through mazes in the meeting room. The next day on Friday, October 16th, from 10 to 11, we have a Bubble Wonders program presented by Jeff Atkins. He has traveled internationally. He has delivered programs to over a million people teaching about the science behind bubble making and showing what bubbles can do. So we're excited to have him there. And then on Saturday, October 17th in the morning, families can experience Japanese style drumming. And that's with um, a group called Moo Performing Arts and they're out of St. Paul. So for families that aren't leaving town during the MEA break, we've scheduled quite a bit going on at the library. Also in October, we're pleased to host Hastings native and author, J. Ryan Stradle. I believe he's a 1994 graduate of Hastings High School. His debut novel, Kitchens of the Great Midwest, hit the New York Times bestseller list. I believe he was, uh, it was number 19 when it debuted uh, back in August. And he's going to be at Pleasant Hill Library the evening of Thursday, October 8th. He'll be talking about his book, he'll have copies to sell, and he'll be signing for people that want to um, meet him that evening. This fall, we're also trying something new. We're offering ebook and one-on-one -on -one technology help on Thursday afternoons from 2 to 3.30. And this is for people to drop in at any time. They don't need to register for it. If they need extra help on the computer, if they need help with ebook apps on their mobile devices, help working on a document, whatever it might be, we'll do our best to help them figure it out. 
No registration is required. Uh, it's something that some of our other branches have been doing, so we're going to give it a try this fall and see how it works. We're happy to help people anytime they come into the library. This is just some special time that we've set aside for that. These are just a few highlights of what we have going on this fall. More details can be found on our website at dakotacounty.us slash library, or folks can call the library at 651-438-0200. Our November and December branch guides should be published soon. We have um, coming up in November a large Lego display with the Twin Cities Lego user group. They're going to set up a large display in the meeting room. We have a presentation by the Minnesota Zoo Mobile, an antiques appraisal program, which we expect will be quite popular, and a gingerbread house contest. Those are coming up in November and December. So we've got a lot happening. I appreciate your time. Hope, you, hope to see you at the library, and uh, thanks again. Well, thank you for that fine presentation, Mary. Sounds like you're very busy at Pleasant Hill Library. We are. We love it. And, and yeah. The upcoming events sound fantastic. Looking forward to being some of those. Very good. Councilors, any questions or comments? Okay, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Council, next on the agenda is the consent agenda. What is your wish? Council Member Schultz makes a motion to approve, seconded by Council Member Brocks. That motion is now before the body. Discussion to that motion. Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Next, we'll go to awarding of contracts. Um, we have a, the award of contract for the mill and overlay program in 2015. The resolution is before us. Nick, welcome to the meeting. Thank you, Mayor Hicks. Greetings, City Council members. Good evening. Engineering Department opened four bids on September 10th for the 2015 mill and overlay program. Again, this is Pine Street between County Road 47 on up to 15th Street that we're aiming to recondition and give a much better riding surface. We got four bids ranging from just over $252,000 on up to $277,000. The low bid being that of hard drives, who we have seen in recent years, uh, including 2015 here, they did the paving work on the Balls Drive and South Frontage Road project and also County Road 42 for the county. Uh, that said, the bid was slightly over what we had set at uh, as our budget for this program of $250,000, so we did make some adjustments to a few quantity items uh, in the contract that we felt were more on the conservative end from our estimate standpoint, and that drops the contract value to just below $250,000 to 249 uh, 800 roughly. So uh, our recommendation is to award the contract to hard drives, and I'll stand for questions. Okay. Thank you, uh, Nick. Appreciate that. Council, this issue is now before the body. Council Member Nelson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Nick, just a question. So what are we cutting out then? I, I see a number here to the base material. Mm -hmm. it, From an engineering standpoint, not an engineer, I don't know. Obviously, it must be okay that you're recommending this. But explain to us what we're cutting out, that 2%. We had an item in there for uh, subsurface patching, essentially, is what it was. That is to say that once we do the initial milling and peel up the uh, first couple inches of pavement, we were going to inspect and take a look to see if anything below that level needed any uh, fortification and, uh, and, and shoring up. And we, we put in a, a multiplier on our project of about 10% pavement quantity for that, um, just to be conservative, not knowing what lies beneath. We've ratcheted that down to about 7% instead, I think is what uh, I'm sorry, it was 5% as a multiplier, and we ratcheted it down to closer to 4% uh, instead. So uh, we still feel comfortable with what we have to work with there uh, and don't think we'll get into that item too much at all. Perfect, good. Mm -hmm. One more question, Your Honor, if I may. Please. Thank you. Nick, the benefits of this mill and overlay program, we've talked about it a little bit, and this kind of runs down the... I, I guess it's not the heart of my ward, but it, it's right there in the middle. Yeah, it's right there in the middle. The, the residents of Pine Street and those people that use it every day, what are we getting for this $250,000? And, and, you know, are there additional costs to people that live there? If we redo a road, normally we assess right. some of the cost onto the residents there. What do we do in a situation like this, just so people understand? 
Yeah, this is a non-assessable project, or non, we're, not, we're not planning to assess anybody for it. We uh, decided that it's strictly state aid money that we have to use on our collector roads or busier roads around town. And what this will do is give us a solution that's not a full reconstruction where we take all the pavement up, grind everything underneath, and, and get a completely new cross section there. Uh, but it'll buy us hopefully 10 to 15 more years before we would get to that point of needing to do the more intense work, all the while eliminating much of the effort we've had to make in doing pothole patching. Um, if you haven't been out there recently, I encourage you to drive it here as a last chance to see what it's like before we get into the project, because it is full of patches over the last few years of uh, that freeze thaw in the spring, just destroying that surface. Sure, So, and, and one more too, Your Honor, I guess, sorry. When do we start with this project then? It'll start late September and run two to four weeks, weather dependent. Okay, so we'll get it done yet this year. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember Alonji. No, thank you, Your Honor. Nick, I see here on the financial impact, you mentioned that the low bid came in 6.4% uh, lower than the construction cost estimate. I'm emphasizing the phrase construction right. cost estimate. But then uh, 2,600 higher than the maximum allowable budget. That's the second phrase I want to uh, yep. emphasize. So we had a maximum allowable budget that was lower than the construction cost estimate. So I just want to ask staff, did we as city council put you guys in a tight spot by not allowing you a budget that was necessary for you to reach the construction cost estimate? What happened there? Well, we put together the construction cost estimate. Again, we tend to be more conservative based mm -hmm. on uh, the records of costs that we get from projects year in and year out. And mm -hmm. we assembled it the way that we felt that it could go, but we wanted to play the field and see what mm -hmm. kind of competition was out there to just be able to have contractors tell us if we were pricing the market appropriately. Mm -hmm. uh, and through that, they did step up. And what our contingency plan was, if things came in closer to the estimated cost, was to reduce the scope of the project a little bit, mm -hmm. or perhaps delay it and package it up with a bigger program in 2016. This is something we're planning to do annually and hit some of our worst sections of collector roads. So it, it would have been possible to do that and, and put it in a bigger program, but this price fell into a good spot where we should go forward and, and do it this year and get that taken care okay. of. Thanks, Nick, and Your Honor. And I know there's a little bit of game theory you know, involved here and all that whatnot and trying to you know, play the field a little bit. Do you, do you feel that the contractors understood the nature of this? Well, what was happening? Because what, what I don't want to do is in the long run is, is they'll look at what we're doing. If, if, if in the long run we say, hey, the estimate is really up here, but they know that we've only authorized a certain amount, I mean, I, it seems to me like we're not, I worry about the long-term impacts of being mm -hmm. able to negotiate that. And, you know, mm -hmm. our, is, is that a staff concern or, is, or am I just over worrying a little bit? I think, um, being this is our first go around with this program, now we'll build a bit of a history and seeing where things go with these sorts of projects. We had hopes of getting this out the door earlier in the summer and felt that maybe there was some increased risk by putting it in the fall that we'd pinch the schedule and put a lot of pressure on contractors and might see those prices go up. Um, but once we have some, some background with doing these sorts of projects and looking at a couple of years worth of history on it, we can plug in more appropriate figures into future budget requests. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Is there any other uh, discussion? Oh. Not yet. Councilmember Lodge makes a motion to uh, to uh, accept the uh, the bid. Second by Councilmember Vaughn. That motion is now before the body. Is there any discussion further on this subject? On the motion. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Thank you, Nick. Uh, next, we have a uh, resolution and a house move site plan for 2975 Riverwood Drive. John, welcome to the meeting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. I've got a couple pictures here I'd like to show. I'm just going to put the monitor back on again. It looks like it turned off on me for a moment. And go this way, I guess. But the proposal we have before us tonight is a house move and site plan on Riverwood Drive by, uh, by Bill Odding. Uh, the proposal itself would be to move an existing 
home onto a lot. This would be a four unit structure when it is constructed. I've got the picture coming up here on the screen. This is County Road 47, this is Riverwood Drive, and this is the vacant lot. So the proposal before us is a site plan approval for the house itself and the approval to move the house onto the site. A little bit of background on why we consider such items. Anytime a new home or an existing home has moved into the city, it does require approval by our planning commission and approval by our city council. The site plan aspect comes into it because it is a four unit or larger structure. They're pretty much the same review on it. The Planning Commission did look at this at their meeting on September 14th, voted 7-0 to zero to recommend approval of the house move subject to the conditions within your packet. We did not have any members speak to the project at that meeting. We did notify people within 350 feet of the property of the proposal before us. We did hear from one individual, didn't have comments relating to the structure, but uh, issues relating to area rentals, breaking and entering, and uh, other kind of mayhem like that, I guess. So, this is what we're looking at on the site. This is the, pro the home itself. And uh, the home itself was built in the 60s or 70s. It's being rehabbed right now, as you can see, with new windows and new siding. This is what the property will look like. The home will be built here, with the driveway coming off of Riverwood, and a four-stall garage in the back of the property. This is a similar property that Mr. Otting did in 1995, where he moved in a home and uh, put it on a foundation to make it into a rental structure. So it's going to be very similar to this home and very similar to the other properties within the area. Within the report, we did list uh, a compatibility. One of the things we look at with house moves is ensuring that the home itself is compatible with the neighborhood, found that it was, and so we are recommending approval of that. Mr. Odding is here if you have any questions for him. Otherwise, I can stand. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John, for introducing that item. Council, this issue is before the body. What is your worst? Council Member Schultz. No question. John, could you go back to the um, map? Mm -hmm. Not that map. There. Yeah. What, can you give me a general sense of the footprint of, like, where, how big it's going to be, like, in comparison to the one next to it? Council Member, it should be really similar to this one, okay. actually. All right. It's about the same size property. This is a little bit larger, but the footprint should be real similar. Okay, thank you. And Your Honor, um, the trees um, on the back, the back end, are they all going to be taken out? That one, um, let me take a look at the site plan here. Can you take a look? The tree locations are over here. Bill, do you have any give you a thought to the, the trees on the property and whether they would stay? You're going to have to move a few of them out. A few of them out? Okay. New ones in, okay. So any trees that would be removed on the property would have to abide by a tree preservation policy. So depending on the size of the tree, uh, they would have to have uh, the other trees, the new trees, uh, substitute for them. The larger the tree, the more trees planted, essentially. Okay, thank you. And so from what it looks like to me, that those trees that were sort of bordering where it says lot three, block two, they mm -hmm. might be able to stay, and then the ones that were back further by the garage, they may have to, it's possible. Th that's what it appears to me from looking at the property here. Uh, let's go back to this one. You've got this one over here, which mm -hmm. might be a problem. The ones over here potentially could be saved. Uh, Mr. Mr. Um, I think save as many as possible of the trees. That would be, be a good idea. Um, Your Honor, I will make a motion to approve. Councilmember Schultz makes a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second by Councilmember Alonji. Councilmember Alonji. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. And of course, I'm broadly supportive. I just have a quick question here for, for you, John. Uh, when I look at the subject property and the valuation, I assume it's important to know the valuation normally because we want to get a sense of what kind of structure is coming in. That's one way of measuring what kind of structure, whether or not there's a fit for the neighborhood. And I guess I was just surprised that that information is not available. We don't have any county tax records. I, I thought, uh, I thought Councilmember Nelson's colleagues did a, did a pretty good bang up job in the <laughs> Dakota County and uh, keep it, keeping records on this sort of thing. We don't have anything at all that indicates how much this property is worth, the house is structure sure. is worth. Yeah, Councilmember, that was a, a, a strange occurrence to me as well on this one. The, the property itself was, was, did not uh, originate in Dakota County, I don't believe, mm -hmm. which, uh, ah, but a it lesser did, county. It, it, it did move in from some other county and 
Mr. Otting is at possession of the home for some time. We, sure. we have uh, inquired to him to find information relating to its past because that is an important aspect to determine, mm -hmm. uh, but we were unable to find that. We did have uh, one of our building inspectors travel to the property to inspect the home, and he was satisfied that uh, the condition of the home was adequate and that uh, it was in good condition. Thank you, that answers my question, Your Honor, and that satisfies me as well. I'm glad a building inspector went out there. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I'm glad about that. And I think for evaluation, we'll probably take a look at those two properties adjacent and uh, probably get a good ballpark figure. We have a motion before the body. Is there any further discussion to the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Okay, next uh, we have the Arts Task Force call for entry recommendation. Melanie? Your Honor and Counsel, you have before you tonight a recommendation from an advisory task force um, that spent the last several months talking about public art. If you recall, earlier this year, the Council provided direction to create a task force um, to solicit members of the public to develop a process by which we could create a grant program for public art. Um, we have with us tonight Scott Sinclair, one of our task force members, and um, Scott's going to talk a little bit about um, the task force and the recommendation. We did provide um, the, the proposal of the task force within the packet for your, uh, for your reading pleasure, but I'll turn it over to Scott now. Thank you. Mr. Sinclair, welcome to the meeting. We're very glad to have you here. appreciate your role on the Arts Task Force. You bet. Thank you. And uh, just a quick background. We have been meeting, we've probably met four or five times now. As artists, I'd say we sort of uh, started with a blank slate. I mean, you guys gave us a, a pretty broad uh, task, I think, in the terms of a great budget and the chance to kind of develop uh, this program around a concept of of continuing, I think, in the tradition of what's really taking place in town in terms of the art space development and the Hudson building development and a, a pretty, uh, I think, rapid and, and uh, consistent growth within the arts community. So we, uh, we met uh, initially really just to sit down and say, okay, what does this mean and what are we going to do? And, and of course, the uh, brainstorming sheet was pretty, pretty long and so then we met again and we kind of narrowed it down and we landed at least initially on an idea of, uh, of basically trying to pick up some type of a permanent uh, public art piece through a process of, uh, of a call for entry. Um, really looking at it on a national basis, not just necessarily um, from local artists, but something that could speak to uh, both people that live in Hastings, that people that visit Hastings, uh, perhaps uh, the potential for it to be a, a draw in addition to the riverfront development. And so we've developed the package uh, over the course of several meetings and uh, kind of tweaking here and there. It's really um, kind of the first step in our minds. If this goes well, we, we could see this going in many different directions or having a different focus through each cycle or perhaps growing on top of this as, as budgets allow or additional funding is found through uh, some other initiatives. But at least initially we see this as piggybacking or contributing to the Riverfront Renaissance. We chose a couple of the sites have been designated, developed a call for entry, and we'd like to deploy that and uh, hopefully get a, a great response from the national arts community with some proposals for us to consider and uh, ultimately come back to you with, uh, with a recommendation for, for award. We could see that going We've picked three sites that we'd welcome people to propose on. Uh, there's a 3A, 3B, and then the second one, uh, site two, they're called on the map. And so we've kind of left ourselves open to doing one or two or three, depending on the proposals we get back. And we've tried to give ourselves really uh, not a super narrow defined, but a broadly defined uh, call that's going to bring in, hopefully, a, just a, a, a wide variety of proposals for those, for those pedestals. Okay, uh, are you willing to take questions and comments? I am uh, the I'm the designated spokesperson. Okay, so, good. Uh, Let's put them on the spot. Yeah, I'm just teasing you. Uh, the commission's done a great job, and I commend you and your fellow uh, colleagues on the commission. I went over all the information that you have here. It's very important work. Uh, this council uh, is very excited about uh, being involved uh, with the arts community and help developing the Riverfront Renaissance and other. Uh, possible art that we could uh, establish in our community and we've already seen some of it um, 
uh, along our uh, riverfront down by J.C. Park <coughs> and to work with local artists. And, and uh, so that's something I hope that we're just beginning and that's going to grow even uh, larger in scope as uh, in the years ahead. So uh, I will uh, open up to questions. Councilmember Alonji. Thank you, Arne. I just want to start by saying how excited I am. This is just outstanding. And the work that I've seen here is, is very, I mean, I'm, I'm married to a, to a writer, to an author, and so I just know how disorganized artists can be. So <laughs> the fact that you found enough artists that had organizational skill, I know Fran well, so I mean, it didn't, <laughs> d didn't surprise me with the group yeah. with Fran can, can, can pull this off. But uh, there are some, just to have a group of artists pull together like this and put together such a great package is just uh, really wonderful and fantastic. I, I didn't see anything in here that I didn't like. I, I, th I thought it was just marvelous, so I want to start off with that. And I just had a question. It might even be more for, for staff than it is for, for you. We've also talked, as part of the Riverfront Renaissance, at the, at the workshop, we talked about there being sort of like the, a visual art, like a, a, a painting, or perhaps, or some sort of something we put on the screens for the substation. Has, has this group been made aware of that? Is this also playing into this plan, or is that going to be a separate thing that has to wait for our vote on Riverfront Renaissance Phase 3 before they can consider it? Your Honor and Council, the task force did talk about it. I think the first meeting was a lot of brainstorming on what were the different locations throughout the community, mm -hmm. and of course the substation screening was one of those. Um, because that was still in process, We've held off on that, and the task force is focusing on okay. phase two. Makes all the sense in the world. I, th I think it's fantastic. I, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Just let us know how we can support you, and please keep up the great work. Yeah, I can speak from a personal perspective of having participated as an artist in a, a similar program in my hometown, a small town of Charles City, Iowa, but a similar development along a riverfront. It was wildly successful. They got great entries. They did uh, two seasons of it. This is going on 10 years ago now. And, and all of them are still there, um, and they're, they're great pieces. They play well off of each other. It creates a nice kind of destination or point-by-point -point destination along a river, and um, we see that. Yeah, we're excited, too. I mean, it's, it's, it's an easy thing to be a part of when, you can, when you've got a budget to work with and you've got support, so it's, uh, we're excited to see what comes in from, from around the country for, for ideas. Your Honor. Council Member Schultz. Um, thank you for all your hard work. And, and Mary Ellen Fox, I encouraged her to apply, and she is not disorganized. I'll just have you all know. And she's an incredible musician so and school nurse. That was more a shot at my wife than anybody on the panel. <laughs> well, I'm sure Sometimes she's, she watches council meetings. I was so. going to say, I'm sure Probably she's Probably not watched. tonight. And, and aside from all of her other talents, Fran is one heck of a tennis player. So I think you're all doing a great job, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with. And I also have a whole list of musicians that I've gathered over the last couple months that I'm going to pass off to Mary Ellen um, that you guys might want to consider as we do some stuff with um, the pavilion. And just a, just a side note, we didn't mean for the final decision to neglect any of the different you know, mediums or different arts kind of groups within the city. I mean, there's powerful organizations in theater and music and and fine arts and craft, and you can probably name a hundred different versions of art and, and, and the different directions we could go in. And, and fundamentally, as challenging as it is, it, we had to pick one, obviously. So, and we felt like it would be more effective to be somewhat narrow, at least in establishing um, you know, a, a permanent piece versus uh, an arts piece or, uh, or, sorry, a theater piece or something like that that would be difficult to kind of discern what was better in terms of uh, criteria because it just didn't, it seemed too broad. So we hope to have the chance to kind of do this and then meet again and come up with the, the second and the third and, the, and so on as we uh, kind of plow through this first one. Uh, further discussion? Council Member Vaughn. Uh, just a comment, I, reading through your notes, I do appreciate you that you have old blue on your radar <laughs> of <laughs> something to do with it down there on the riverfront. Thank you for that. I know we, that's why we saved the piece of it. So hopefully an artist will take that and uh, come, a, come up with a proposal for it. And uh, I hope that that comes to fruition. Uh, Scott, I just have a, a question. First of all, I just want to tell you that uh, I'm really pleased to see the, uh, I, think you, you know, I think the Arts Task Force has recognized its earlier, its first mission, and that is to help us with the Riverfront Renaissance, as you indicated in area art one and two and three. Uh, I appreciate that, you know, and, and that you're concentrating on that and, the, and the why you are, for now, looking at the certain medium of art to try to 
fulfill this request and there will be plenty of time hopefully in the future to expand this program and to add others. Uh, but I think you're spot on with your, organ you know, with your uh, charge there, you and your colleagues. Uh, I just want to ask you, you know, one of the things that you have in your proposal is that you are going to give preference to local and regional artists, but it's going to go out nationally. Uh, how hard of is that going to be to, to judge those and uh, what kind of a ranking does that get uh, once you finally get to a final decision about what pieces ultimately are going to be recommended by your commission? That's a great question. I don't, I don't know that we've got a, a scoring sheet or anything that's going to allow us to really define it in any particular way. And I don't even frankly know if that's a, a measurable criteria. I mean, in a lot of ways, you, you could judge the art on, on an image alone and not know who, who proposed it or who dreamed it up or where they were from, whether they're from Hastings or from Hawaii or wherever. So um, I, I don't think there's a great way to answer that, to be honest with you. We'll find out when those proposals come in, aren't we? I think we'll have to. Um, I just noticed that one of the requirements says, you know, the, in a sense that regional local artists are preferred or get top consideration or something like that. But, uh, and I think there's some consideration to the logistics of, of it coming to fruition. Uh, that there's, it's one thing to propose a piece, I think. And then if you've got somebody proposing a three-ton welded in place structure and they're from Honolulu, I think we might have to consider what some of those logistics are of getting them here and whether there's a practical side to them accomplishing this proposal because artists dream big and I can speak to that myself and, and uh, they might be able to put a number on it that we won't necessarily think is realistic. So there might be something of value in having somebody that's within the region that can get here and readily access the site and get their materials. Think I'm just thinking off the cuff really in that, in that that's respect. A, that's a good perspective. I but, understand um, that better. Yeah. I think, well, there's going to be a lot of considerations, I think, to looking at these besides just the nature of the piece itself, because we do want it to actually happen, and so we'll have, to, we'll have to look into the crystal ball a little bit to make sure we agree that they can do what they propose to do. Let's be realistic, maybe, a little bit. We'll try. Yep. It's not our strongest suit, necessarily. Uh, but I love the fact that you went in there and you asked them to be imaginative, and that's great. Yeah. You know, to be as imaginative as they can. Hopefully that won't be, and we might go back and look at that. I, I'm, I hope it's not discouraging in any way to a, a potential pool that they would say, well, I'm, I think I'm too, I'm too much of an outlier to really hope that I might get it in there if they're kind of thinking about that. So we might look at that language a little bit. collectively one more time before we send it out officially. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for the work you're doing. Is there any further discussion? Councilmember Balsanic. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to bring up. I, um, I, I, I can appreciate that we would want to keep the money local in terms of saying, well, we'll, you know, we'll give a nod to the local artists. Uh, but I, 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 I don't want, yeah, I, I just have a feeling that it could leave a bad taste in the mouth of somebody from Montana that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what my chances are. You know, there, there may be 15, 20 local people, you know, in Dakota County who, uh, would get this what I would suggest is when the time comes to do the judging that um, that it not be revealed who the artists are so that it's uh, uh, it's a vote that is taken without prejudice that's something you might want to take back to the to the group thank you, you bet. Okay. okay council member Lange Thanks. I, I value everything I've heard here. I, I also just want to make sure that we're, we're thinking here in terms of what we're trying to set up in the entirety of downtown is a community for artists. And I think one of the best ways to pull artists into the places that we're making, the, the, the living spaces that we're helping create, is to show that we have a community that values local artists as well. So I got, I, I got, to, I got to make sure that I, I, I'm, I'm fine with us putting some qualifying Lang, you know, language around it saying while we welcome you know, applications from around the world and give everyone due consideration, simply reserving the right I think is a very fine way to do it. I, I just trust the group to art their way through it. I, I, they'll, they'll come up with the right language and they'll strike the right balance and I think we can, I just feel like we can trust you guys to make that, yeah. make great decisions because you already have. 
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is the beginning of something that's going to be really great. You know, we can down the road really expand our horizons. I know there was this one community, I can't remember where it was, but they had an artist make like bronze mice mm -hmm. doing little different things, and they placed it all in their downtown. Was that in Ohio somewhere? And what they did was they, the artist made some mice, and then they placed them on buildings, or right, maybe right around the corner. And they were secured, obviously. But it was kind of fun for tourists or kids like when they were in the downtown there in this particular city to see, hey, where can you find the mice? Where are they? And they were kind of hidden within the landscape. Sure. So uh, maybe we, we, down the road we can be inventive with some of those kind of ideas. And, and you don't know where this could, where, uh, this could take us. Well, I'm just, uh, it, not for this particular project, but down the road, probably. Uh, Council Member Brock. That's what, I was going to say something similar to what you were saying. I can see uh, in the future, like an art walk, something that would tie all the different downtown parks together so that you could point people to go here, go there, and then so that they fully utilize all the stuff that we're building downtown. I think that would be really cool, and I think, I think it would be very, um, it would be another step after this, maybe, just yeah. a vision I'm proposing. I agree with you. Potential is limitless and it's fun. Uh, Council Member. I mentioned Mary Ellen Fox and she shows up. I told you she was organized. <laughs> okay. So here's another task force member is here. Welcome, Mary Ellen. We were just telling Scott what a fine job the Arts Commission is doing. We really like the proposal. So, so, Is there any further discussion? We do need a motion to, uh, to authorize a rec you know, the recommendation to, to call for our for entry of recommendation. Council Member Balsanic makes that motion, second by Council Member Lange. Uh, that motion is now before the body. Is there any further discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Okay, next we have before the council is uh, comments from the audience. Are there any comments from the audi audience this evening? Okay, seeing none, council announcements. Council Member, Scho or council Member Lange. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This Wednesday on the 23rd at 7.30 a.m., there is a planning committee uh, meeting uh, for that uh, that we'll, we'll have. won't last much more than maybe a half hour or so, John, would you say? Um, and then I believe we don't have anything else before the next council meeting. Would that be accurate? I don't think we have any other planning committee activity scheduled. Okay. Okay, what is the agenda uh, for the planning committee? I'm going to ask John to take, it, take us out there because I, di I didn't copy and paste it into my little compute, handy dandy computer here. Okay. Sure, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. The planning committee will meet on two items, one of them relating to a request to purchase property the city owns related to that small strip of, strip of land near Walgreens on Highway 61, and the other one relating to a lease for a cell tower at the Roadside Park Tennis Courts. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Your John. Honor. So, Council Member Schultz. John, um, HEDRA, October 8th, and then are we having another event in October? We have the, the tour in October, the uh, community development tour, I think, on the 6th. The 6th, right? Right. Okay, and can you remind me of the time of that? That, I believe, is 5.30. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, is there any other announcements, Council? Seeing that, I just have a few more. Uh, Planning Commission will be meeting a, a week from uh, tonight, uh, Monday, September 28th at 7 p.m. here at City Hall. And uh, I had a great time last Saturday night at the car show. Uh, we have one more left. Hard to believe that the season's coming to a close. But the next and last car show of the season uh, will, be this, uh, will be Saturday, October 3rd from 5 to 9 p.m. Council, I have no other items before us. Uh, a motion to adjourn is in order. Councilmember Schultz makes a motion to adjourn, second by Councilmember Brox. That motion is before the body, a non-debatable motion. All those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails and we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>